Well, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with my Knife Safari series of videos, um, the idea here is that uh, I show off for you all uh, the knives that I picked up in a visit to the uh, Texas State Surplus Store in Austin. Um, and tell you a little bit about what I picked up and what I paid for it and see what you think. Um, so the Texas State Surplus Store is where uh, surplus equipment ends up from state agencies. So they have all kinds of like filing cabinets and desks and office chairs and stuff like that. They also have uh, all the knives that were surrendered to TSA in airports in the state of Texas end up there. Uh, well, <laughs> a lot of the knives anyway. I'm sure that some of them go home with TSA agents. But um, uh, there's there's quite a bit of good stuff to be found. Um, and unlike some of the other um, TSA uh, outlets, um, stuff that's sold at the surplus store uh, is available individually. You go in there and you can pick out one knife at a time out of bins uh, marked with different prices. Um, they do have some stuff that's bundled into lots, but it's usually not really worth the, the expense or the, you know, uh, faith that there won't be something in there that's worthwhile and that there won't be a lot of junk that you don't need. Um, so um, if you're going to go, I always recommend wearing cut-resistant gloves because when you're digging through these bins, there could be blades in there that are open. And uh, in addition to that, uh, the knives are all used, and they've been used by who knows who for who knows what. So some of them could be pretty grody. Uh, I uh, wipe them down with rubbing alcohol, and eventually, I, um, if I'm going to keep it or sell it or give it to somebody, um, I will usually disassemble the knives to the extent that I can and clean them up internally as well, uh, so that everything's in, in good shape and working really well. Um, <clears throat> let's start with the Victorinox uh, in this set. Um, so this one came in the sheath. Uh, this was in a, so Vic, the Victorinox knives uh, are separated in, into several different price points. Um, the, the best stuff is in a $20 bin. You can get um, Victorinox Classic uh, knives, the little, the little keychain ones for a dollar, and then they have uh, some slightly larger ones for three dollars, um, and of course uh, the, the, the good, the really good stuff ends up in that twenty dollar bin. Um, so this, the, all three of these Victorinox knives that are on the table today were in that twenty dollar bin. Uh, this is the Swiss Champ, and it's in pretty good shape. It looks like it has been carried in that pouch, so it has not been in, in somebody's pocket with keys and stuff to get all scratched up. Um, and it's still got all of its accessories. It's got the, uh, the ballpoint pen here, right? It's still got a toothpick and tweezers. And I know that, yeah, buying a used toothpick is kind of a gross idea. Uh, I have uh, a whole bunch of replacement toothpicks that I have purchased in, uh, in, in quantity from, um, well, from Victorinox through Knife Center. Um, and I have some replacement tweezers as well. Um, again, you know, I disinfect these things with 90% rubbing alcohol, wash out that channel that the old toothpick was in, and uh, replace it with a new one. I haven't done that with this model yet, but um, this is in really good shape. Uh, all I've done with this is just kind of wipe it down with alcohol superficially. Um, the, um, the blades don't look like they have been abused at all. There's no big chips or bends. Uh, the lens on the magnifying glass is not scratched up, right? It actually magnifies. Um, and this is a good, you know, multi-tool. It's got all, all the weird ones on there, like the fish scaler, which is also a ruler, right? Uh, it's got a little saw. It's got pliers, which are actually not bad for light duty stuff. It's got a decent pair of scissors on it. It's got the awl, it's got the corkscrew, it's got a Phillips head screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. Um, it's a pretty uh, complete package uh, for Swiss Army knife. This is the kind my dad used to carry uh, before he passed away. Um, so it's it's kind of neat to have one. Um, they, they go for um, well over $100 uh, retail. Um, so getting it at 20 bucks in uh, really good condition seems 
completely reasonable to me. Also, um, this is a different tool, but it's uh, not quite as many tools, but a little bit more specialized than the tools in the Swiss Champ. Uh, this is a cyber tool, and the big sort of headline feature of this one is that it has um, the, uh, the interchangeable bits. I bought one of these previously um, and was pretty happy with it, um, except that it didn't come with all the bits. This one's got all the bits. So it's got eight different interchangeable bits that can go into that bit driver. Because uh, there, it's four. There are four of them, and then they're just, they're both double sided. So uh, you got eight different uh, size uh, bits you can drive. Uh, this also has pliers, right? Um, it's also got a ballpoint pen, and uh, this one even has. Well, both of these have the little uh, micro screwdriver that's in the corkscrew. It's for like adjusting glasses or doing other real small screws. Um, yeah, um, good tool. Scissors, pliers, 20 bucks. Uh, these go for like 130 or something, uh, something like that when they're new. So, not bad. Also, for 20 bucks, I got the Victorinox, Victorinox Hunter. This has walnut handles. This one's a little bit scarred up. It's got a little chip here missing out of the tail, but it still functions fine, and it doesn't seem like this walnut's about to break more or fall off. I think it's in a reasonably secure. Um, sort of a, I don't know, bead blasted finish on this. Um, I don't know what kind of steel this is. All it says is stainless steel uh, on the product product page. Swiss made. Uh, you know, might be a little bit harder than the steel that they use on the um, blades on the multi-tools. Uh, one would hope with a, with a blade this big. This is a three and a half inch blade with a thumb hole opener like Spyderco, so you can open it one-handed. It's very ergonomic. It's a big, beefy knife. Uh, these go for like 130 or something like that, uh, new, so for 20 bucks. And it's, you know, good lockup. It's not going anywhere, not, no wiggle at all. It's a lock back, pretty simple. So yeah, I think that was a good buy, 20 bucks. This is the most expensive thing on the table today in terms of what I paid for it. Um, at the surplus store. This is um, Lion Steel. Lion Steel is uh, one of the several knife makers based in Maniago, Italy, um, and it is a, a participant in the consortium MKM, Maniago Knife Makers, which also includes fo um, Fox knives and um, uh, Viper and one more, I think. Um, Maserin? No, 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 not Maserin. Uh, Masserin's another Italian knife maker, but not part of MKM. Um, anyway, Lion Steel is, is the big one, uh, in that consortium. Um, they, um, this particular knife is designed by somebody who's just identified as Max. Max Design. And Max is, uh, uh, known for, looks like there's a little spot of oil on there, I should dab off with my little commemorative Wee Civivi uh, tweed microfiber cloth. Um, so Max is known for the, uh, the uh, Lion Steel Opera uh, and the collaborate collaborative version of that that that, that Lion still did with spider co the spy opera um not sure what kind of wood these handles are i haven't looked up this model to learn more about it yet it's got a nice little leather fob on it um it's a d2 tool steel which is okay but not particularly special but it's a, you know no pocket clip on this it's an attractive gentleman's knife um I mean, it's, a, it's an attractive knife for a gentleman. <laughs> not necessarily a knife for an attractive gentleman. Um, although, why not? It does have a lock back. Uh, it's good, secure, you know. Uh, D2 can rust, and there is maybe a little bit of staining. Yeah, you can see a little bit near the tip there. Um, could probably be polished out. 
really nice, attractive piece of wood, whatever it is. Uh, all right. Um, what else do we have on the table today? Well, here's one I found. This was eight bucks at the, oh, this, by the way, was 50 bucks at the surplus stores, individually priced. I haven't looked up to see what those are worth, but I'm sure it's at least double that. Um, this is an Almar Japan knife that I found in the $8 bin. Um, Almar uh, was originally in Japan, um, and uh, they made some kind of high-end knives. Uh, they're, the contemporary Almar knives are a lot more affordable, and they're made in, uh, I think, Taiwan. Um, the company has been sold and is under new, new management. Uh, but this is one of the older ones that was made in Japan. And uh, it's a little scratched up, but that could probably be polished. That's just a little steel plate there. Um, the blade steel on this, I looked it up. I think it was like O6, no, ATS-34. Yeah, which is better. Um, still got the logo intact. Right. Uh, these are collectible. Uh eight bucks, so I'm sure it's worth well more than that. Um, got a couple of $3 knives here. Um, this Camillus, which is in, I think, 440 steel. Yeah, doesn't say which, which 440, but it says 440. Um, no pocket clip on this one, just a little lock back. Good, secure. Um, looks like these screws need to be tightened down, though. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that before. All right, well, I can fix that. Uh, those might be screws for a pocket clip that has gone missing. So that's a possibility. But anyway, um, $3 Barlow style, traditional pocket knife. Uh, Barracuda. I'm not really familiar with this brand. I suspect it's Chinese. Yeah, it's Chinese. Uh, $3 is probably generous uh to pay for this but it's actually not bad i mean I'll, i i need to clean up that rust on there and give it a good uh thorough once over looks like there's some paper stuck in the oh i'll get that later anyway um yeah it's fine uh the wood i think i bought this because i like the wood uh Shrade. I have a few of these. Um, these are supposedly USA shrades, so that's a while back. This one's got a clip point, and a lot. Of, I think the other ones I have are drop points. It's the CH4 Shrade Plus. Um, just a little liner lock. You know, pinned construction, so not too special, but uh, three bucks. Um, all right. Case, right? This is the mini black horn, mini long, mini something horn, prong horn. Something I can't remember what the name of this thing is, but it's it's the kind of one of the least expensive case knives you can get, but made in the USA, right? Stainless steel, lock back, and another one, another case. This one's a little bigger, also a lock back. This one's in better shape. Looks like it hasn't really been used at all. I mean, it's been carried. Clip point blade. Zytel or nylon handles. Okay. Uh, a buck. USA. Model 444. Okay. Hollow ground. Probably 420C or 420HC. This one is made in Ireland. Imperial was made in the U.S. for a long time, and then they were made in Ireland, and then they were made in China. Um, so that was from their the Irish period. This one was in the all of these. These have all been three dollar knives so far uh, in this in this row, uh, including this one. This is Bear Ops. Uh, which is the sort of like tactical uh, version of Bear and Sons. This is made in the USA, supposedly. Or probably, I mean, I have no reason to doubt it. 
Uh, feels like it's running on ball bearings. And this blade steel is S30V. And the lockup is good. So it's a liner lock flipper in S30V, USA made, $3. That's a pretty good bargain. All right, I already covered these guys. Uh, Twitch, uh, so the CRKT knives, um, the better ones end up in a bin that's marked $15. I went ahead and bought two of these Twitch 2s. Uh, these sell for, like, the, the metal one is a little less and the wooden-handled one's a little more, but the wooden-handled one's, like, 80-something bucks. Um, and I got it for 15 I got each of these for 15 uh, It doesn't quite spring open unless you kind of give it a little flick. Uh, it, it opens real good from the thumb stud. This is a, line, a lockback flipper, which is a little bit unusual. Flippers tend to be like liner locks or things like that. Um, but you can tell the blade's in pretty good shape um, on both of these. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a nice little knife. I might might sell those as a pair or something. Um, little uh, Chinese Kershaw. The blade on this is pretty pretty scratched up. Drop point blade. Lock back. Locks lock up on that's fine though. This one was interesting. This is an older one, and it is damaged. Uh, this may be ivory. I'm not sure. It might be um, a different kind of material, like vegetable ivory, which was an early uh, sort of syn synthetic ivory. Um, but I think this knife is old. Carbon steel blades. Camco. What else does it say in there? Can we see? USA? Yeah, I think that says USA. Yeah, USA. Camco USA. Um, model 512. That's the zip, the area code for Austin, which is where I got this thing. Um, yeah. Interesting knife. I'm going to have to do a little research and learn more about this, and uh, I'm going to clean it up, and I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I could probably just fill that in with some kind of epoxy. Um, but it does appear to be a natural material. It might be ivory. Uh, or it might be something else. Bone? I don't think it's bone. Anyway, it's a two-bladed knife. Uh, got a regular blade and a, and a little pen blade. Uh, and both of the blades are intact. Uh, they're rusty, but I can clean them up. That might be a really interesting find. It was three bucks. Um, this is nothing special. It's browning. Uh, it's kind of got a Barlow shape to it. Uh, it's a liner lock. It's made in China. Um... It's fine, right? It's perfectly, oh, it's actually not a liner lock, it's a frame lock. Uh, you know, it's a nice little knife. Probably pretty basic steel, like 8CR. Should be easy to sharpen. And one more. Oh, this was, this was three bucks, by the way. And this was also three bucks. This is a buck, supposedly. Buck Special Edition, and it's model 325. I don't know anything about this or what makes it special, uh, but I will investigate. Um, it's frame lock, which is a little little different for Buck, not the most common design. Made in China, so not a USA Buck. Uh, it's tiny. You know, um, lots of uses for small locking knives like that. All right, well, that's what I picked up in this most recent trip to the state surplus store in Austin. Uh, hit me up in the comments if you have questions or if you know anything about these knives uh, and want to share. 
uh, I'll catch you next time. If you like this kind of thing, I do this periodically. I've got a knife buying habit that uh, is some kind of pathological problem. Uh, but if uh, watching my videos uh, satisfies your knife browsing uh, curiosity in any way, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.